Romans chapter 5, verse 1. I want to deal tonight with learning to stand with God, if I can. And I like this, and the Spirit of the Lord has been blessing me in this, in, in this, and the Lord spoke to me to minister to you. We, we've learned how to stand against the devil, or at least we think we have. But truly, we haven't really learned how to stand with God. We get nervous when God comes to town. I notice this in a lot of pastors. When the power of God begins to really flow and the fullness of the Holy Ghost begins to really happen, a lot of pastors, quote, will back away because they're scared it might get out of balance. Well, we'll put it back in balance. If somebody gets in the flesh, uh, uh, get them out of the flesh. You know, I, I have a friend of mine, you know, he says, you know, I don't like too many things to move too much because you know it's allowed to get crazy. I said, well, if it does, fix it. But and you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You just fix what needs fixing. That's all. You know, just that simple. And you let the Spirit of God do what it's supposed to do and accomplish and finish. Learning to stand with God. The book of Romans chapter 5. I want to start reading with verse 1. The Bible says, therefore. Look how big that therefore is. Isn't that the biggest word in that verse? Don't look at me. Look at the Bible. Look, at it. it says, therefore. You almost have to read it like this. Therefore, being justified by faith. See how, see how big that therefore is? Don't look at me. Look at the Bible. Look how big that therefore is. Therefore. Isn't that a big therefore? That's the biggest print word in that verse. Now, the reason why they made it so big is because you couldn't finish, start to read this verse unless you read the verse above it. Because it's a connecting word, a connecting thought. So we have to read Romans 4, verse 25. And it talks about this. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Therefore. Now you understand what that therefore is there for. <laughs> Anytime there's a therefore, find out what it's there for. So therefore, title of the sermon, learning to stand with God, therefore being justified by faith. Not justified by religion or ancestry, but by faith. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Now, notice there's three types of peace in the Bible. There's the peace of God. That's what you get when you get born again. You have peace from God, and you have peace with God. Many people don't realize there's three types of peace in the Bible. The peace of God. When you get born again, you say, Jesus, come into my life, and he just comes in and gives you that peace. But then when you have that peace of God, you also have something called peace from God. But most Christian people don't understand that because if they don't feel God, they think he's mad at them. It don't make a lick of difference if you never feel him. He's still there. He never leaves you forsaken. You see? So you have peace from him as well as peace of him. And I may have said this when I was here last time, but I'll say it again. I mean, I used to pray the stupidest, dumbest prayers ever when I would fly. Now, I fly 300,000 miles a year preaching the gospel. I don't care if there's 500 people waiting to get on that plane. I start walking. I'd stop, man. I'd put both hands on that wide body jet. And I'd say, Jesus! I mean, I, I put a shambok, Lord. Lord! Oh, Lord! You know, I, I want to make sure the Lord heard me. You know, praise God. So I, I put a shambok, Lord, on him. You know, I say, Lord! I said, Lord, I'm getting on this plane. And Lord, I ask you to protect me, God. Guide me, Lord. And don't let nothing happen. And the Lord said, Jesse! 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 What? He says, shut up. <laughs> shut up. I said, shut up. I'm praying here. Why are you telling me to shut up? He said, what's the matter with you? You think because you're getting on the plane, I'm getting off? <laughs> I said, well, well, no. He said, didn't I say I'd never leave you or forsake you? I said, yes. He said, then shut up and get on the plane. <laughs> just get on the plane. So all you got to do is just get on the plane. He said, now, if you want to pray, it's okay to pray to me when you're going to get on a plane. But pray this way. Lord, I'm going to do a work for you. No devil in hell is going to hinder it. And I'm protected by the power of the Holy Ghost. Greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. Then get on the plane. Just get on the plane. Sit down and have a nice day. See, then I realized I did not have peace from him. I had peace of him but I didn't have peace from him. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God, peace from him. So I don't care if I don't feel him. It don't make a lick of difference. I know I got it because where I am, he is too. You understand what I'm saying? But I also have peace of him. Now here, I also have peace with him. Or in other words, when the presence of God comes in your house, you don't go, oh, Lord, I'm nothing but a low-down, dirty dog, piece of trash. Oh, Jesus, get rid of the magazines. He's coming. My God, get rid of the magazines. Praise God. I don't want God to see this. No, you have peace with him. Or you're afraid of God. 
I was taught to be afraid of God. All my religious life, God will kill you. How many of y'all been Catholic at least once? God will kill you. I said, well, I ain't going around him. I, I don't go. I just knew if he'd come to New Orleans, he'd kill me. My mother said he would. My priest said he would. My nun said he would. And she almost did it for him several times. <laughs> then my mother and father changed, relation, uh, changed religion. I thought, praise God, I won't get my ears pulled no more. I won't get pinched and hit and hurt no more. But Baptists are worse than Catholics. <laughs> Don't shout me down. Lord, man, they were rough on me. Then my daddy got the Holy Ghost, and we had to leave that place. And I thought, praise God, these people are wonderful. And they were worse. They looked at me and said, you've been waiting the balances and found wanting. And I thought, what is balances? I ain't getting on no more scales. I had enough of that. I didn't understand anything. And I knew if God would come, surely he would kill me. But you see, when I came to the knowledge of Jesus, not only did I get the peace of God, but I got the peace from God, and now I have the peace with God. I said, hello, Jesus. He said, hi, Jesse. <laughs> see, now it's relationship. Now it's fellowship. Yeah. It's no more for afraid. Praise God. It's fellowship. It's riding together and enjoying each other and talking to each other and just being and blessing each other. Yeah. I love it when Christmas comes because I wrap a gift. I put it under my tree, and it's to the Lord. And I tell him, don't look. You know, he got the power to look. I mean, you know, he can look right through that. He said, what is it? I said, you're not getting it till you, and they go, you can't open it up till Christmas morning. He said, and he will honor me, and he has, I've done this for years, and he honors my request. He said, you bought me something. I said, yeah, I did. He said, what is it? I said, I'm not going to tell you. I said, don't look. Because, you know, he just looked right through that package. How do you think that's nuts? But I do that. See, Jesus is the only person that doesn't get a gift, and he's the only one having a birthday on that day. Yeah. I've got to get him something, don't you think? So come Christmas morning, Kathy's open her gifts, my son-in-law and my, and my daughter and all that kind of stuff. I say, Lord, <laughs> yeah! I can hear him say, whoa! See, he's that close if you understand this fellowship. How do you know? How can you get like that? Justified by faith. Title of the sermon, Learning to Stand with God, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our anointed Savior Messiah. The Lord Jesus Christ means the anointed Savior Messiah. Christ is not Jesus' last name. Of course, everybody thought it was, but it's not. The translators really did us a disservice when they translated Jesus' name as to Christ. It should have been Jesus the anointed. You see, so when you see the Lord Jesus Christ, it means the anointed Savior Messiah. Now watch this. Let's read that again, verse 5. Uh, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith. Notice you're justified by faith. Now you have access to God by faith into this grace. Title of the sermon, learning to stand with God. Learning to stand with God. How do we stand with God? Into this grace. Next statement. Wherein we stand. He didn't say wherein I stand. It didn't say wherein you stand. It said wherein we stand. Or in other words, wherever I stand, I'm standing in grace. God is with me side by side, front, back, and all around. You see, notice God stands in grace. I want to put this little thought in your mind, then we're going to go some other scriptures. So let's read verse 2 again. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice. You know, Pastor Dave, people get mad at me because I'm a happy man. I mean, they get mad at me because I'm full of joy. They say, well, just who do you think you are? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a son of God. That's who I am. I, I'm not the son of God, but I am a son of God. My name is Jesse Duplantis Christ. I am adopted into the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's something to get excited about. That's something to rejoice over. See, now notice that verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Didn't say wherein I stand or wherein you stand. Wherein we stand. You can't tell me God's not around me because I'm standing in grace in him. And rejoice. Rejoice in what? 
in hope. The word hope there means earnest expectation of the glory of God. You mean that's why you're so happy? Yes, because the glory of God raised Jesus from the dead. The glory of God will lift you out those chairs and bring you to the holies of holies. The glory of God is wonderful. See, so I stand in grace and I rejoice in earnest expectation. Well, I know the Lord loves me. He, he can't help himself. He loves me. I flew home today for about an hour and a half, I guess. My wife, I guess she must have missed me. She said, boy, you look better now than you did when I married you. And I looked at her and said, her eyes are going too, man. That woman's crazy. That's not true. I looked, I looked at myself when I was 20. I was a good looking man. I'm a bad looking. I mean, my God, I said, she's got high a damn glory to God. She must not have her contacts on. <laughs> but to her, I do. You know, the older I'm in the Lord, the more I realize how much more God is wonderful. Yeah. It's a process, learning to stand with God. So I rejoice in hope, in earnest expectation. Ernest expectation. I mean, God has blessed us so much. I want to let you know, I'm on 367 stations across America. That's a lot of money. Millions of dollars. It's all paid for one year in advance. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Totally debt free. Don't owe a dime to nobody. Nobody. I don't get nervous when my wife goes to the mall. I don't have to. Because when you debt free, you are so close to rich, it's wonderful. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, you're debt free, you're so close to rich, it's amazing. You're walking around with your check saying, honey, what, 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 what should we do with this? And she says, I have plans. Give me that. And she just takes it from you, and you never see it again. It's wonderful. I say, God, what are you doing? He said, I just love you. I just like to bless you. He said, you're standing in this grace wherein we stand. Now, I want you to put that and keep your mind right there. And you see, and I want to go over to Ephesians chapter 6. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. I'm laying the foundation of this message. Ephesians chapter 6. Now, this is, teaches us where we stand against the devil. And most people think they believe this, but well, let's find out how much you do. You see, Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to start reading with verse 10 of Ephesians 6. The Bible said in Ephesians 6, verse 10, now this is talking about standing with the devil. It says, finally, my brethren, finally, my brethren. Notice that, you're part of the family. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. He didn't say anything about being strong in yourself. He said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The word might means the ability to produce what God told you to go do. That's the Greek definition of that. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Strong in the Lord and the power of his might. If you understand this, and I will tell you something, I don't care what the world's doing, you will walk on top of the water for the rest of your life. Yeah. Now, I have a lovely father. He's, in, he's 70 years old. He's a blessing. Sometimes he'll come over to my office and he'll look around, you know, and he'll say, son, he, he never calls me by my name. He just calls me son. I tell you, son, oh, son, I, you know, he, he says son so much, it reminds me of that old foghorn leghorn chicken that he's, you know that, car, that cartoon, I, I say son, oh, you're listening to my son. I say son, you know, you know, you know that, that, that chicken on a, that big old ugly bird. I said, daddy, my name is Jesse. I understand, son. But he'll walk around my office, he says, son, I don't know how you do it. I don't, this would drive me crazy. I can't understand how you can be under the burden of this ministry. I don't, you gotta believe for millions of dollars every year. I don't understand how do you do it. Boy, I, it would stress me out, it would kill me. He's telling me all this stuff in my office. I said, daddy, 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 do I look stressed out? He says, no. I said, Daddy, he said, how do you do it, son? I said, I don't do it, Lord. Daddy, it's not my ministry. It's God's ministry. I, I'm strong in the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord, and in the power of his might. I just show up for work. It's his business. And, he, and he'll go, yeah, yeah, I understand that, son. But I don't understand how you do it, boy. I tell you one thing, I couldn't sleep at night. I said, well, stay up then if you can't. But the Bible said he give his beloved sleep. And I like to sleep. And when I sleep, I sleep good. He don't understand that. He said, son, tell me. I said, daddy, there's no way I can generate enough money to operate Jesse Duplantis Ministries. So I don't. 
I don't. I let God do that. That's his business. You see, if God don't meet my need, he don't meet his need. Because the only thing I'm doing is his work. Everything I do is his work. So if it don't work, it ain't my fault. It's his fault. Bless God. He the one got trouble, not me. Now you think about it, Dave. Everything you do is his work. If he don't meet your need, he don't meet his need, and you can take it to the bank, God's going to meet his need. So how do you live? How come you stay so happy? Well, finally my brother and be strong in the Lord. Just in the Lord. Flying over today, a man looked at me. He's from Jersey. He looked at me and said, um, and I'm sliding this thing down here, praise God. He said, what are you coming to do in New Jersey? I said, I'm coming to preach the gospel. And I saw his legs go. <laughs> Just begin to shake. He couldn't, then the plane was full because American Airlines striking, see? And everybody's trying to get flights. So I mean, everything is packed. I said, what do you do for a living? He said, I work for a chemical company. I said, oh, that's nice. I said, what are you doing in New Orleans? We had to go down into a meeting. I could tell I made him nervous. Then it dawned on me, I'm the most powerful man on this plane. I said, yeah, I'm a preacher of the gospel. He said, what faith? I said, well, glory. He said, I know what faith that is. <laughs> That's all I said was glory. <laughs> hey, I, I, love, I, could, I could hear the devil going, watch him. Watch him. And don't tell him what he's going to do. Watch him. Right. He was nervous. I could tell he was nervous. Sitting right by me. Glory. <laughs> they gave us a sandwich. Did you eat that thing, Todd? I ought to eat anything, praise God. <laughs> Let me put this thing on here. They gave me my sandwich and his sandwich at the same time. He went, I said, are you going to choke on that or are we going to pray over it? He said. <laughs> He's peeking, boy. <laughs> so I said, my father, bless this food and, and all the rest of it. It's on his teeth right now. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. In Jesus' name. Amen. I said, you better pray over this stuff. Ain't no telling where they got it. Ain't no telling where they got that food on the airline. I tell you, if you drop it over a country, it'd kill people. Them sandwiches are at least 20 days old. How many of you know what I'm talking about? That's some trash out there, man. I mean, I got an opportunity just to speak a few words to the man. Why shouldn't I do it? But Brother Jesse, it doesn't make you nervous? No, why? Why? Because I'm strong in the Lord. Finally, my brother, can I take this coat off that? All right. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now watch this. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. In other words, that's something you ought to be wearing. Put the whole armor of God on. Do you know there's a whole denomination walking around with just a hat on? Are you naked? Maybe the reason why the devil can see people so easy is they naked. Put the whole armor of God on. There's a whole denomination. All they're wearing is a hat. Are you naked? Jesus said, put the whole armor of God on. There's a reason for it. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. It didn't say against the wiles of sister so-and-so. She's not the devil. The devil is the devil. Now, sister so-and-so may be a thorn or a complete bush. We don't know. But she's still not the devil. Put the whole armor of God on. You'd be surprised how many Christians don't even put the armor of God on. Walking around naked as a jaybird. Wondering, how come the devil know where I'm at? You naked. <laughs> Just naked. Now watch this. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now we ought to know this, but we're not. Nobody's doing this. Hardly anybody. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Stop for a minute. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You know what that means? I'm not going to fight my brother. I preach in Baptist churches. I preach in Methodist churches. I preach in Episcopalian churches, Presbyterian churches. I preach in the Archdiocese of the Roman Catholic Church in New Orleans, Louisiana. I preach in all kinds of churches. And I've had people say, how can you do that? Because I don't wrestle with flesh and blood. I refuse to fight you. I refuse to fight flesh and blood. I walk the love line. I want to live. Glory to God. I recognize the anointing on people's lives. Now, I'm not saying I agree with everything some people do. 
I don't agree with a lot of things people do, but I refuse to wrestle. I am not a Christian wrestler. I don't fight Christian people in churches. I don't have no problem with that. Why? I refuse. I've had people get mad at me about that. You ought to say something. I said, no, that would make me a wrestler. Jesus said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I don't wrestle with them. I didn't say I agree with what they're doing. I just said I don't wrestle with them. I've had some people say, well, what do you think about that? It don't make no difference what I think. It's what God said. It's like one man told me one time. He was really cutting this preacher. I said, it was on television. I stopped. I said, wait, wait. This brother has this man on his mind. So let's pray right now. Go ahead, brother. Whatever's on your mind, say. <laughs> I mean, since you're talking that much about it, you must have him on your mind. So let's pray. I don't wrestle with flesh and blood. I refuse. I don't have time to fight people when there's a devil out there destroying people. Why? Because I've learned to stand with God. Why don't you fight people? Because I stand with God in grace. God's in grace. He decided to anoint certain people. He anoints them in grace. Now, his grace is wonderful. And sometimes you wish his grace wouldn't work for some people. Because there's some people you'd like to get out of here. There's been some times, ladies and gentlemen, I have walked up to a pulpit with a church this big, that many people, look at people and going, I was tired. I went, oh, Lord, let them all go to hell. Let's get out of here. Bless God. Let's just go on home. Hey, I'm just as human as you are. Sometimes you don't want to preach. Sometimes you don't want to hear nothing. Sometimes you don't want to go to church, but you got to. You're the pastor. You have to go. <laughs> but you don't feel like going sometimes. Say, boy, I sure could just sleep here a little bit. Bless God. Tell them to put on a video. <laughs> well, that's what you do sometimes. I don't feel like going, so I'll just put a video on. <laughs> Did you see people going, ha, <laughs> ha, we're not afforded that luxury. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Put the whole armor of God on that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But what do we wrestle with? Or what do we come against? But against powers. Or excuse me, but against principalities. That's one class of devils. Against powers. That's another class of devils. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. That's them big demon devils against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's those devils assigned by Lucifer over nations and continents. We got a war going on, ladies and gentlemen. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood. Sister so-and-so is not a principality. She may be close to a power, but she ain't a principality. You understand? You come against the devil, you leave her alone. You let God handle her. Now, I look at some people and say, God, do something with these people. Now notice verse 13. This is called learning to stand with, against the devil, but most people don't do this. Now don't forget the point, learning to stand with God, the title. We're going to go back to Romans 5. Watch this. He says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Notice that the whole armor of God, that's the second time he says that, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. So there's an evil day coming. And having done all to stand, Stand therefore. See, how do I understand that? Well, let me switch it around. Therefore, stand. <laughs> See, all you got to do is stand. Yes. You don't have to do nothing else but stand. Yes. It's like children. If children would go to bed when you told them to go to bed. But no, no, no. You know kids can't sleep less than been beat twice. <laughs> Why do you send them babies to bed? When it comes time at night, to come up here. Kick the fire out of them. Oh, oh. They fall asleep. Don't send them to bed unless they got a whelp on them, man. Because that's the only way they're going to go to bed. All they got to do is go to bed. All you got to do is stand. But you said, but, 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 no, but, 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 stand. That's all. Stand. Stand! That's all you got to do. Why is that so hard? See, it's not hard if you got the whole armor of God on. Wherefore, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth. Why do preachers commit adultery? Because they're not wearing their underwear. There it is right there. That's a fact. Now, why is that funny to you? That's the reason why they're committing adultery. 
because their loins are not girded about with truth. They're walking around naked. They haven't put the whole armor of God on. They're naked. You know, I wish it was funny, but it ain't. It's hurting millions of people across the world. That's why they commit adultery. The loins are not guarded about with truth. What is truth? If Jesus is the way, you can't get lost. If he's the truth, you cannot be deceived. If he's the life, the devil cannot kill you. But I want to let you know, when truth holds you, no devil in hell can ever get a hold of you. Have your loins girded about with truth. People that are messing up are not wearing the armor of God. You're naked. You can spot people that are naked easily. I look across this congregation, and I tell you, so many people here tonight, you kind of flow into each other. People dressed up real nice, but I promise you, if a naked person would walk right down that aisle, everybody would know who it is. <laughs> Think about this. Stand there for having your loins girded about with truth. He said, put the whole armor of God on. Most people don't do this. Remember, there's a whole denomination walking around naked as a jaybird. We love the loud. That's why you always, yeah, yeah, we got to keep looking up. I understand. Naked. I'm going to get this in your mind. You'll never forget this. Have your loins girded about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Notice this, the breastplate of righteousness is the closest thing to your heart. And most people refuse to be righteous. When God comes to go, oh, Lord, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. Oh, I'm nothing but a low-down, dirty dog, piece of trash. Lord, I'm not worthy. Put the vest on. Just put the vest on. It's right by your heart. Your loins are now girded about with truth. Put that vest on. When the devil says, you're not right, just say, read. <laughs> I can't do it, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Righteous. Notice it's closed. It'd be kind of odd when we went to fight Saddam Hussein if Storm and Norman Schwarzkopf and all the American armies would have marched out in the Arabian desert with just a hat on. <laughs> now you laugh at that, yet the church world is doing that. <laughs> Going to fight the devil naked as a jaybird just got a hat on Jesus said put on that breastplate of righteousness now notice verse 15 and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of what peace that means every way you step there are puddles of peace you leave not trouble and descent why because if you're leaving trouble and descent then you are wrestling with flesh and blood you're not standing with God. You're standing with the devil. Leave puddles of peace everywhere you go. I don't go to try to change people's mind when I preach the gospel. I preach them Jesus Christ and him crucified. I go preach in churches that don't believe anything at all in the Holy Ghost. If you said tongues, they'd spit on the ground. I ask them, why do you have me? They said, because we like you. And they said, but we don't want you saying nothing in tongues. I said, okay. But it's liable to come out when I least expect it. Don't get mad at me if in the middle of it, it just go flying out. And I've been in some of the biggest denominational conventions preaching and preaching on, if, you know, on the cause, cause and the condition and the consequence of salvation because it's a salvation message. And bless God, just come out and I'll tell you, look on my shotgun, and they go, did this freak out. Morning, you can see him running the tape back. Erase that, erase that. You can't erase the Holy Ghost. I did that at that convention, and two preachers jumped up on the front pew and said, We got it too! We got it too! Now I realized that most of the place had the Holy Ghost, except for the hierarchy of the denomination. God's going to get you. If you don't believe in the Holy Ghost, chances are you sitting by somebody that's got it. It's very contagious. Television audience. It'll jump on a Baptist in a nine-line second. <laughs> the Holy Ghost love Baptists, boy. You know why? Because Baptists love Jesus. They come over there and they go, bring it in this little book of she. Bring. I'm it's going to get you. Don't get mad at me. It ain't my fault. It's a gift. It's going to get you. 
It's going to happen. No, I'm theologically, homiletically, hermeneutically, philosophically taught. You'll forget that. You'll walk beyond that and walk into the covenant blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying? Now, he says that here, and your feet shall with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So I've had preacher friends of mine say, you mean to tell me you got to preach in that church and you didn't jump all over that church about them idols? I said, no. Why? I preach Jesus Christ and them crucified. You know, people think I don't like Catholics, but I do because I was christened a Catholic. And I've learned something. If you christen a Catholic and confirm the Catholic, you're always a Catholic. They ain't letting you out. I, I don't care if you've been coming here 40 years. They still counting you. You just, you're just not a practicing Catholic, but you're a Catholic, Jack. You may say, I've left the church. I don't make no difference you left the church. You don't leave the church. We leave you. You don't leave us. I'm serious. They will count you. I don't care if you've been in 40 years. They're sweet people. But you know, it's the only church I know, the only church I know in the world is the Catholic church that has an altar at every pew. You want to pray in the Catholic church, no problem. Slap it now. Am I telling the truth? You can start speaking in tongues and nobody will usher you out. You can pray in the Holy Ghost and they'll go. <laughs> he must be charismatic. They won't say nothing. You go do that in other churches, they'll say, you, out. So before you criticize those wonderful people, you might ought to go see how much God you can turn loose in that place. They won't say nothing. You say, I believe in healing. They go, oh, me too. They ain't saying, healing not for the day. Am I telling the truth? So, you know, so many people are so critical. They, my God, don't wrestle with flesh and blood. Everybody's got some good qualities somewhere. Just pick up on all of them and incorporate it into one central theme and watch God do his work. Well, so notice this. So he said, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, above all what? Above the loins, above the feet, above the breastplate of righteousness. Taking the shield of faith. Now, this is talking about learning to stand against the devil. Yet, most people don't do this. Taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all, not some, all the fiery darts of the wicked. Why do people get tired living by faith? Because they're carrying the darts. God said, carry the shield. He didn't say, carry the darts. But you've been carrying them darts for 40 years. What should you do? Knock the darts off. Just go to where and scrape the, knock the darts off. But see, you've been carrying them quiet. You know, grandma died nine years ago. Bless God. Believe him for healing, but the devil stuck her bad. Bless God. Still carrying that dart. Get rid of the dart. Carry the shield. Forget the dart. Knock the darts off. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Why? So you can quench the fiery darts. And he says, so you can carry the fiery darts. And most people carry it. Say, I don't blame that face stuff no more. Bless God. Why? I said, I just can't live like that. I said, because you're carrying the darts. Carrying the darts? Yeah, you're carrying all the darts. So just carry the shield. He said, just carry the shield. Leave the darts where they fall. You understand me? Above all, taking the shield of the faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, here in verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation. There's that hat. That's that hat. Bless God, we're saved. But are you naked? <laughs> Just got a hat on. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It's funny, but it's so true. Walking around naked as a jaybird and devil just kicking you in the rear end when he feels like. <laughs> Busting you, hurting you anytime he wants to. You have no protection whatsoever at all because you refuse to put the whole armor of God on. This is called learning to stand with God. God don't stand with naked people. He stands in grace. He's clothed with the glory of God. You see? But everybody walk around with just that hat on. <laughs> Bless God, grandma was naked. Yeah, that's my God. I was glad she died. It was terrible to look at. I ain't kidding. Boy, it was like, hot, hot, yeah, naked. Some people think it's cute to be naked. Well, it's amazing to me. Most of you people probably have a picture of a little baby, six months old, naked as a jaybird, on some little blanket. See where I'm going? And some of us, especially grandma, some of them put them on the refrigerator. Look, look, look at my naked grandson. Look at my little naked daughter, my little naked baby. 
And that's this. Isn't that so cute? You think that's cute? Yes. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, that's why it's so cute. Look at And then people come over and the kid grows up and my God, the family takes out and says, let me show you what John looked like. Oh, mom, man, don't show him that. I don't show him that naked, baby. Don't show him that naked, baby. Pictures, mom. Oh, look how cute this is. You think that's cute? Why, why isn't it cute? When your daughter's now 21 years old, she's centerfold for Playboy. Do you say, oh, look at, look at my daughter. <laughs> wait, 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 let me help you here. Hey, wait, wait. Isn't she beautiful? Look how pretty she is. Look, isn't she beautiful? Who hadn't she developed? <laughs> oh, you said, no, that's not right. Well, that's what you're doing for God. See, when you get born again, you're going to do some naked stuff because you're a babe in Christ. But some of you have been saved for 40 years and you're still naked. <laughs> it ain't cute no more. Why? Because you know better. You know better. So put the whole armor of God on so you don't walk around as the centerfold for Satan's magazine. You hear what I'm saying? It ain't funny no more. It's not innocent anymore. When people get born again, they do some crazy thing because they're babes in Christ. They're excited. Where the devil? Where the devil? <laughs> they'll gum the devil and they'll drool all over the boy. They don't, I mean, they, they want to bite the devil. But you need to grow in the Lord and put the whole armor of God on instead of just a hat. You need to have the full armor of God on. Now go with me back to Romans 5. Now you're going to understand this in this light. Now you can understand Romans 5 the way it was wrote. 5 verse 1. Because now you have the whole armor of God on. You've learned how to stand against the devil. You've done all the stand. Now you're standing there for it. And bless God, you got a helmet of salvation on. you got a breastplate of righteousness. You have a shield of faith in one hand and a sword of the Spirit in the other. Your loins are girded about with truth. Your feet are shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You're walking out, bless God, like a military soldier of the second of the Nazarenes. And the glory of God is ascending and descending on you. And the devil's going, who is that? Who is that? Oh my God, man, I can't see. He's blinding, blinding. And what he's blinding is because God is standing behind you and together you are standing in grace and you say, don't touch this boy. This boy belongs to me. There you learn to stand with God. I'll prove it to you. Now you understand. Verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 1 of Romans. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our anointed Savior, Messiah, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Now you and El Shaddai are standing. Watch this. And you're rejoicing in hope or in earnest expectation of what? Of the glory of God. You got El Shaddai, Elohim, Yahweh, Adonai. All around you, you're standing in grace. You've learned to stand with God. You're a full military commander of the Nazarene. And you lit up like a light. Glory to God. The devil's looking at you. Look at this boy. He used to be naked. We don't even know who he is. He's got God's clothes on. But see, the devil is so spiritually dead. He goes, I can't, I can't see you. Now, don't be stupid enough to do this. Oh, no, devil. It's not God. It's me. I get my hat off. I take my hat off. It's me, devil. Whap, whap, whap. Beat your brain up. Keep your hat on. It's a helmet. It's covering your face. And the glory of God is standing. Thanks for listening to this powerful message by Jesse Duplantis. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell in order to be up to date with all things Jesse Duplantis Ministries. For more information, visit our website at jdm.org. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.